passive strategies. These are things that you do long before the wildfire is threatening. Um, you do them and then you just maintain them. You sit back and maintain them. Some of these things can be installing finer mesh screens or flame and ember resistant vents on your attic or crawl space, installing a gutter cover. You do them and you're done. Um, active strategies. You do this prior to evacuating and these are intended to have short-term benefits. So passive strategies, long-term benefit, active uh, strategies, short-term benefit. You do before you evacuate and you undo when you uh, return. There's two pictures on this uh, slide. The upper left shows a pretty good defensible space. The lower right-hand picture, not so good defensible space, a lot of debris on the roof. So you could choose to use one of these uh, more elaborate strategies uh, to compensate for poor defensible space or uh, home hardening actions you haven't been able to get uh, around to. You could use them because um, it just gives you a greater comfort level. So we're gonna start out by talking about exterior sprinkler systems. Um, and this slide just shows you the various places on your property where these sprinklers could be installed. They can be installed on your roof. They can be installed in the under eave area pointing down, or they can, can be installed on the property looking out. So what location is one thing, a one decision that you might have to um, consider. There are a number of commercial vendors um, out there and they've decided these things for you. Two things that are pretty clear about use of exterior sprinkler systems is that one, you want to have a standalone water supply. You don't want to rely on municipal water. Um, you can utilize it. Um, it wouldn't be available necessarily for first responders and the like. And you want to uh, anticipate your power going out. And so you would want to back up power supply or a, or a way uh, to deliver the, um, the water that doesn't rely on, on, on electricity, for example. There are some uh, pressure uh, pressure delivery systems. You can sort of rely on that, for example. So this is an example of, of a, a home project, a DIY project, where the sprinklers were installed on top of the roof. And um, you'll notice in the lower right-hand picture that the uh, area right next to the home um, did not have any water at all. So this could be a problem because um, embers could um, bypass, no, some members could bypass that sprinkler and, and land next to the home and ignite the home that way. Um, so the, the, I think some of the things that we don't know so well is what does wind do to sprinklers on, on the property during a high wind wildfire event. So it's possible that the wind would make the water from the sprinkler system land next to the house. And um, so I think you just need to be cognizant of the fact that the water on a calm, sunny day, when you turn it on to check it out, it may not do exactly that during a windy uh, wildfire event day. Gels, I think we need to just, just to understand the difference between a gel and a foam. A gel is a super, absorbent polymer so it has a lot of water in it. You spray this on the side of your uh, home, um, you can spray it on vegetation also, and it's this abundance of water that has to be evaporated by the heat of the fire that protects your home or your vegetation, your plants. Um, and once that water is evaporated, then you know the protection is gone. But foams, on the other hand, uh, change the water to make, uh, to, to affect uh, what's called the surface tension of the water. And it makes the water more efficient in, in extinguishing fire. So you need less water, so to speak, when it's a foam base, but it doesn't stick well to, to horizontal, to vertical surfaces. And so you can't really expect it to hang around for a long time and protect any kind and expect any kind of long-term performance. So foams typically are used for active fires. Gels are used to protect for a fire yet to come. So gels can be applied by the resident or by a first responder. But I think the important thing is, regardless of who applies, the, the, the minute you apply it, it starts to, to dry out, it starts to dehydrate. And so the um, 
effective time that that water is going to be present um, is going to depend on temperature and wind kind of conditions, but it's but it's not going to be forever. So there has been a, a recent research um, project that tried that that evaluated how long gels would last, and uh, I think it was pretty clear that the effective time for a gel product once applied um, was about three hours. So not a long, long time. And this sort of made us think that um, when a homeowner is doing this, really, your, your, your time is better spent elsewhere than doing this because the duration of effectiveness isn't so long. Um, if it's a first responder, whether that be like your, your, your uh, firefighter on the fire or one of these third party uh, firefighters that might be hired by insurance industry to, per, to look at one home or several homes in an area and they can come back to the home and rehydrate the gel, then it's a different issue and it's a different scenario, different story. Uh, but for a homeowner, you know, it's, it's really um, hard to argue that it's an, an effective use of time. Here's uh, uh, just a, an example from a demonstration I did a couple of years, uh, many years ago now, but um, I think the, the, the point that, that, that I took home from this is that um, A, you need to have, you need the gel needs to be applied everywhere if you're going to do this. And if you're a resident, um, you're probably not going to be very experienced at applying a gel. The gel was applied to this wall by a very experienced applicator. And, and let's just leave it at that. But you'll notice that one little spot in under the drip edge was missed. After the application of the gel, we waited a few hours and then uh, burned a wood crib at the base of both walls. And the wall on, in the left-hand picture, the wall on the right had no gel. The wall on the left had the gel. They were the same material. And on the right-hand picture, you'll notice that, that the uh, uh, fire burned through the siding into the stud cavity behind the wall. And um, so, you know, that gel wasn't effective uh, because of that little bit that was missed. And it seems to me something that a homeowner applying a gel for the first time could easily do. So you have the time factor, not so much time, three hours or so, and then you have the need to get everywhere and the likelihood of missing somewhere. Um, and gels don't stick so well to glass, so you really can't expect it to protect glass in a window for, for as long as maybe siding. So we're gonna finish up just talking a little bit about these aluminum, aluminized laminate wraps. And here we have two pictures here. These are both, uh, you know, federal government property, and you'll notice the picture on the left, the wrap covers the entire structure, except for the chimney that you can see there. The right-hand picture is the is the Sperry Chalet Glacier National Park, you know, from a few years ago, and you'll notice that they just uh, wrapped uh, windows and and the front part of the building that wasn't uh, a stone, but the they did not uh, put the wrap over top of the roof and in the underneath area, and you'll notice that this uh, chalet is on fire, you know, it burned. The, the combustible parts burn to the ground, you know. So uh, again, wraps can work, um, but you need to consider how much time and how many people you're going to have to put this on, and where are you going to put it? If you're going to put it all over the place, it's going to take much longer time. Um, and whether you have that kind of uh, person power hanging around, you know, as you're evacuating, it's hard to know. If you use, go this route you really still need to make sure you have pretty good defensible space. I mean, to have the kind of fire that you see in, in this picture, you know, maybe it's an unreasonable fire for many homes, but um, I think the point here is if there's a scenario where you can have direct flame contact to the wrap, um, you can expect it to, to, to delaminate and you can then expect it not to work at all.